chapter 7. Eloping isn't a word. It's more like... Escaping, right? After driving for half a day, we finally stopped in a cheap motel to rest and regain some of our energy. At the same time, I took this opportunity to collect my thoughts. While the situation might have started as a brainless and impulsive act, keeping up with this attitude will only bring us down in the long run. In the end, we need a good we might need a good plan if we want a good shot at this. I first thought we had a good amount of time ahead of us, but this assumption was a big mistake of mine. By asking for a bit more details, I found out that Cassandra was living with another hostess from that bar, so even though she's working only once a week, the other girl will soon find out about her disappearance. I could have asked her to try and contact that girl and maybe convince her not to say what to the boss, but this would have been too big a risk for only postponing the inevitable as a result. Ultimately, I think trusting someone will only trigger the start of our downfall. Dot dot dot. I look at her. She's carelessly sleeping beside me while I'm the one stressing out about all those things. She doesn't seem to care all that much since she showed me the determination of hers. Seriously, what am I doing? Getting out of my way for what? This? Sleeping in this cheap ass bed, eating this disgusting convenience store food? This is all her. No, what am I thinking? No matter how I look at this, I choose to do this of my own volition, right? I shouldn't hold it against her. Still. I know, there's a darkness in my heart that I've yet to get rid of. That darkness which is whispering to me to destroy her. So, did you choose where we're going, my love? She says shamelessly the moment we enter the car. Stop that, it's disturbing. But we're eloping, I can at least call you that much, right? No, we're not. Eloping would mean that we're about to wed, and we're clearly not. But I want to wed. I love you, and we're going to live together from now on, so... She puts her head on my shoulder while smiling brightly. So what? There's no logic behind your words. Get off of me. I shake her off without any consideration for her feelings or even her well-being. Boo, you're no fun. She sticks out her tongue like a little kid before turning her attention towards the window, sulking. Um, she now reminds me of Belle, if you don't know who Belle is. Either play or read or watch. Um, Sweetest Monster it's on Steam. It's a good game. Man, she's a handful. <laughs> I've decided our destination. I thought about it for a long time and... What do you think of Las Vegas? Isn't, isn't it full of mafia? She instantly looks back at me, sparkles in her eyes. So does it mean we're really going to get married after all? I've always wanted to go to Las Vegas. Back off. I've decided this out of convenience for us, not for your little fantasy. Well, I knew how much you wanted to go there. She's talked about it more than once, so I might have taken that into account. But I'm not actually going to say that, am I? But I don't understand. Shouldn't we try to go to some unknown villages instead of going to such a big city? To try and lay low or something? Aren't we asking to be found if we go there? Not exactly. The best place to hide a tree is inside a forest, right? Logically, when you think about someone trying to escape from a group like the Mafia, you think that this person is going to hide in some distant place, far away from urban civilization. That's exactly how his pursuers are going to think too, so naturally, they're going to first search those uncivilized areas. You understand where I'm going with this? Yeah, but while it does look all good on paper, doesn't it mean... doesn't mean it will go that smoothly. That place is known to be run by criminals, right? So it shouldn't be too far-fetched to think they have ties with our pursuers. If we're going to a small place, village or whatever, we're going to attract a lot of unwanted attention. They all know each other in those places, you know? And look at us, not what we could call countryside people, are we? If you say so. She doesn't seem to bite. Is she scared? She shouldn't be. One more thing. I need her to understand this perfectly, else none of this is worth it. Even if they find us, it doesn't change anything, does it? In the end, both our lives have never been worth living. I won't live my days in such a boring place as a village or crawling in fear inside a hole somewhere. My life has been nothing but boredom already, so... She looked at me, clueless. Let's try and have some fun, shall we? She regains that smile of her so naturally, a beautiful, pure and bright smile. That smile that I would have done anything to destroy before. 
I was now the source of its existence. Duh, of its existence. I should feel flattered by this. I should, yet... How disgusting. You still hate her somehow. I don't know why, I don't know how. But you still do. Las Vegas. Bitches. <laughs> it took us another day and a half to arrive at our destination. So, three days all in all. Since it, since it was on Friday night that we've eloped, like Cassandra loves so much to say, we were now obviously Monday, late in the evening. The moment we've entered the core of the city, she became ecstatic. At every street corner she would be like, Oh, or look, 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 it's so beautiful. Or again, I wanna go there, let's go there, alright? And every time, I would just keep my eyes on the road, half listening to her. And when I feel like she's pestering me too much, I would simply say something like, We need to find a place to crash first. Be patient, alright? She was so excited about trivia things that I started wondering what kind of life she has led up until then. She was a prostitute, right? Why do I feel so much like I'm with a kid somehow? Was it really a good thing to bring her with me? To bring her to such a place? One thing we didn't have to worry about though was our budget. I had lots of economy from my old part-time job as well as my current one. Well, current might not be the case anymore, but whatever. Since I left my life up until then pretty much modestly, or more like pathetically, <laughs> I had more than enough for the both of us for quite a respectable amount of time. Obviously, the first place we decided to hit was the mandatory casino. I mean, that's pretty much all there is to see here, so... We've drunk a lot. And when I mean a lot, I mean we didn't as much as think of ever stopping throughout the night. She looked at everything with eyes full of curiosity. The old people on their slot machines would be very intriguing to her. She could gaze at them for 30 minutes without end. And when I asked her if she wanted to try, she looked at me with a smile and said, They look so pathetic, it's almost pitiful. But when you think about it, aren't we the same? We pass our lives routinely doing the same emotionless movements, forgetting even about the meaning behind it. I wonder, if there's a god, wouldn't he look at us with the same pity? That's kinda deep. I walked close to her, put my hand on her head and looked at her silently. I wanted to somehow comfort, comfort her, but no word came to mind. That's when she continued. As long as we're together, let's not do this, alright? I want this to be special. Us. You don't need to force yourself. You don't need to love me. But at least make sure we never forget, alright? Never forget the reason we're here right now. Alright. Never. I promise. I took her by the hand and led her throughout this maze of bright and colorful machines. But was it a good thing to ascertain her wish? I mean, not forgetting the reason why we're here would mean we would be always fearing to be found. Always running. Or maybe that's what she wanted. She would also look at me with great interest when playing blackjack. She didn't know the rules, but the moment I explained it to her, she would try and help me sometimes. And she was smart. Oh, thought that she was. I almost forget, forgot how she was at the top of our school once. To think that she has become so... innocent. Or maybe she always has been. But the way I imagined her at the time, I thought she was a strong-willed woman that could do anything if she put her mind to it. But I couldn't have been more wrong. She was fragile, delicate and pure. Any man would have been better for her. Any man. Yet, she was unlucky enough to choose me out of all of them. Yeah. The moment we started to become really wasted was the moment everything started to slowly crumble. I had to go to the washroom because of the alcohol, obviously, and the instant I got out of it, I saw her speaking with another man. Well, okay, she wasn't speaking to him more than he was trying to hit on her, but Whatever, her eyes were different than when she's with me. She had a stern expression, cold as eyes. It was obvious she was trying to get rid of him, but he seemed persistent. I came up to them and asked her if she knew him. I don't, I don't. He was actually about to leave, right? Oh, so he's your boyfriend? Sorry man, it's just, it's such a beautiful woman you have to, I couldn't pass, up, pass by her without at least trying. He looked at me with that expression, as if what he did was the most natural thing in the world. What did he ask of you? I asked her plainly. Nothing. Answer me. I shouted, not minding the people around us. Obviously most of them did turn around by my sudden outburst. 
She didn't want to answer, but knowing me, she finally looked down and said, He asked me how much it was for the night. You just treated her as a prostitute? Oh, he's still there, okay. <laughs> and I'm asking him now. I I'm sorry. He repeated back again. But as I said, she's a very attractive girl, so... Leave. I said emotionlessly, and without waiting, I repeated the order again. I said leave. He replied to me, Okay, okay, no need to be so cold, jeez, you're meant to be together, you two. I wasn't talking to you. Cass, leave. Wait for me outside while I de deal with this bitch. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> oh god, it's all going wrong. Is this like natural born killers or something now? What did you just say? <laughs> the man became visibly agitated the moment he understood my words. No, 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 Tim, come with me. I don't want to be alone. I don't care how he treated me. Just come, alright? Let's stay together. I took a stance, no longer minding her presence next, next to me. She started hugging me from behind, probably by fear of me jumping on the guy. <laughs> what are you doing? Stop, you idiot. But before I could finish my sentence, I was hit in the face by the man in front of me. What a bitch. He probably took her action as an opportunity to hit me by surprise. I almost lost my balance, but was somehow able to keep my ground. If I stumbled right now, I would fall on her. A second hit came, and I had no other choice but to take it yet again. I fell on her knee. At that moment, she finally understood what was happening as she decided to protect me up from instead. Leave him alone. Don't you see he's not in any position to fight? The guy did stop by her words, but he did say something along the line of next time know with whom you are dealing with, punk, before leaving as though he just conquered the world. I stayed close to the ground for some time while she's kept on hugging me. I sensed rage welling up inside of me, and the only thing she thought to say was, I'm so, I'm sorry baby, I'm so sorry. <laughs> her useless apologies only fueled my anger. I got up from the ground without looking at her and started walking toward the nearest bar. Towards the nearest bar, right? This is one of the common mistakes in this game, I think. I wanted to be alone. I knew what would happen if she kept on following me, but sure enough, there was nowhere for her to go. I drank a couple of shots of my own. She was sitting next to me, but I ignored her. She didn't ask for a drink herself, nor did she start a conversation, but she kept on looking at me. I was the center of her whole world. That's how I felt at that very moment. After that, I went outside dejectedly. I was so drunk I don't even know how I was able to walk so straight. That is, if it was really walking straight to begin with. It was night, maybe 2 or 3 in the morning. She was shivering somehow. She repeated that she was cold multiple times over. I didn't really understand how it was possible since it was relatively hot at that moment. I lit a cigarette and simply looked at one point in space without thinking much of anything. Until... Hold me. Dot dot dot. Please? I'm cold. She wanted me to hold her, ridiculously enough. Get lost. She was annoying. But I want to be close to you. Please. She didn't change gear, even though it was so frigid towards her. She never did, but tonight it was even more than that. She outright showed her dependence on me. No. She approached me nonetheless. The moment her hands touched me, I pushed her heart to the ground. She fell on her butt, her face slightly contorting in pain. Others were looking at me. It seems like I was the bad guy tonight. <laughs> I couldn't care less. I didn't feel anything. I looked at her emotionlessly. She staggered back to her feet, and when she did, she kept a smile on her face, only looking at me. She walked again towards me and said, Again? She wanted to be pushed again. What the fuck was her problem? Well, not that I really minded. When she touched me again, I pushed her in the same fashion I did before. She again stumbled up on the ground, got back on her feet and walked up to me. I started laughing. How the fuck was she so stupid? Doesn't she understand how mad I am right now? Do I even understand it myself? I pushed her. On the ground she was laughing, like me I guess. But this time, she had a harder time getting back up. People were eyeing us as though we were not part of their world, another species entirely. Tss, you're such an airhead sometimes. My anger had totally dissipated thanks to her stupid act. I helped her back on her feet and we entered the casino anew. This is a fucked up relationship they have, really. She was happy. She had locked arms with me and she was holding me so tight I had no other choice but to leave her to her own devices. 
we walked past a multitude of tables, all of which had different ways of carelessly losing your money. She took notice of one in particular. I wanna try this one, give me 20. Alright. <laughs> I gave it to her happily, somewhat intrigued by her sudden desire to play a game. Since we've, we've got here, she was always simply looking my way, happy to see me gamble with no interest in participating herself. She puts the chip the cr croupier gave to her on a number zero. So it's roulette, right? W wait, you know how it works, right? Yeah, what of it? You know you only have one chance out of 37 while playing like this. Sure. The roulette started turning and turning, and soon enough the little ball slowed down to stop inside one slot in particular. And sure enough that slot wasn't the number... Sh wait, wait, what? Hey, I won, babe. What? <laughs> How is this fucking possible? <laughs> yeah, I know, less than 3% is still more than zero, still. She's pretty lucky, I guess. She had won a little bit more than $700. She wanted to give it to me, but I didn't accept it. Even if she didn't necessarily work for it, it feels as though she used a lot of her unused luck to win it. She bought us two bottles of wine, and we finished the night at our hotel. She w Okay, it's getting saucy again. She was on top of me. She looked at me with those passionate eyes of hers. She had a letter opener in her hands. It was lying around on the bedside table, I think. The moment she noticed it, she took it hastily as though she just had a great idea. She then said, I want to write my name on your body with this. Can I? I said, Sure. <laughs> Carelessly, without ever breaking eyes contact with her, I looked at her every movement with great interest. Uh, she applied pressure on my stomach with the edge of the thing, but it didn't do much good. Her name was there alright, but it would probably disappear in less than 5 minutes. She was too soft. Still, she was satisfied with the result. I wasn't. She looked at my stomach, cont contemplate. I skipped this word, okay? Contem contemplatively. Fuck me. <laughs> I took that opportunity to grab the hand with which she held the letter opener and pushed it hard on my belly. What are you? <laughs> this is how you do it. If you want to appropriate me, do it properly. <laughs> appropriate you? I didn't reply to her. My eyes were enough to convey my thoughts. I don't want to hurt you. If you don't wanna, then get off of me. <laughs> God fucking. How can you be so fucked up? She cried. Right then, she cried, but while doing so, she started carving her name on my body thoroughly. Because those weren't tears of sorrow. Oh god, she's fucked up as well, she was genuinely happy. Oh, you two are a match made in heaven, seriously. Can this game end soon, please? It's getting too disturbing for me. Chapter 9, the second day. Wait, it's still only your second day in Las Vegas? And <laughs> you've already won $700 um, by playing roulette and then carving something onto your body? The next day I woke up with one of those fucking headaches. The ones where you can't even stand straight. The first thing I noticed was the blood, blood on the badges. <laughs> I, I saw it in the picture before I read it, which is why I should have known, but it still fucks me up. At first, I thought she might have been on a period, but soon remembered the reason as I tried to get up on my feet. My stomach was stinging as hell. When I looked at what she's done, I was extremely disturbed. She didn't go easy on me, alright? Not that I would have wanted it any other way. I ought to think of buying rubbing alcohol, or else it will start infecting like shit. The next thing I noticed was my face in the mirror. That guy didn't go easy on me either. My right eye was swollen, and I had a nasty bruise on my cheek as well. She too looked rather pathetic herself. Her ass and lower back were quite irritated, probably because of me keeping on pushing her to the ground the night prior. And I must have been a bit too rough during sex last night, since she had faint blue marks on her forearms. And we're not even talking about a headache she must have had too. What did you do with her head? <laughs> Guess it's the alcohol. So what did we do first thing in the morning? We started drinking, what else? We already looked fucking disastrous, so we needed to at least play the part as well. And, after a couple of beers, I can proudly say that the headache had subdued considerably, so when it is all said and done, it wasn't such a bad idea in the end. She wanted to go to the ferris wheel. Yep, there's a ferris wheel in Las Vegas. 
the biggest in the world even. Really? Wow. It is called a high roller ferris wheel if I remembered correctly. It's a huge thing that takes almost 30 minutes simply to make one complete rotation. And even though I tried to explain to her it would be best to ride that kind of attraction during the night, she wouldn't listen to any of it. As if the damn thing would run off on its own or something. In the end, I had no other choice but to comply with her nagging demand. Sometimes she can be very persuasive, I should say. Not that I actually want to explain why. So her first statement upon seeing the thing from up close was... It's huge! Yeah, whoa, it's so huge. It might be a bit too scary now that we're actually here. You're not going to pussy out on me here, are you? You were the one who dragged me all the way here, so now there's no way I'm going back without seeing what the, what's on top of it, you hear? Haha, <laughs> it's probably just some clouds and stuff. Let's just go, alright? Wait, this thing is so high it goes up into the clouds? I don't think so. Oh, no, 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 no. You won't run away that easily. I put my arm around her hips and bring her really close to me. She's become pretty much my prisoner the moment I got a hold of her. Ah, uh, what are you doing? Let go, let go. I don't wanna go. Oh, you sure you want me to let go? She blushes the moment she hears my words and finally says faintly as though she surrendered. Uh, no, please, keep on holding me like this. No, she's fucked up. <laughs> In the end, she did ride it. But she sat on me the whole time? <laughs> what are we speaking about right now? Since it's the biggest ferris wheel in the world, the passengers' cars are quite spacious indeed. The advantage being that we can stand inside and walk from one end to the next, but the downside is that we're forced, forced, to, ride, forced to ride it with strangers, and that in and of itself is a deal breaker for me. Um, the idea of even riding it was scaring the shit out of her earlier, but now she's completely engrossed in the view, pointing towards things we've seen on our way over here or making comments on things she thought was bigger and whatnots. I wondered if she was even scared to begin with. Maybe it was all just an act to be able to sit on me the whole ride. On his lap, I guess, right? They're not doing anything else in there. Not with strangers in there as well. What a sly woman. Still, she earned it the moment I bought it. Suddenly, she broke her easygoingness and took a tone she doesn't usually take. Tim, answer me seriously, alright? I'm always serious. Yeah. You're the kind of guy that is always serious. What was up with her? I didn't like the way she was bringing things along. She removed her glasses and looked me in the eye. Do you regret coming all the way over here with me? What are you saying, idiot? I was the one who brought you here with me. Who brought you with me. That's better. There's no way I would regret any of it. Yeah, but that's because it still hasn't been a week since we ran away. In no time, I'm sure you will change your mind. And when that time comes, you'll hold it against me. Since when do you care what I think of you? She averts her eyes from mine and gazes at the ground instead. She doesn't ignore my senseless words like she normally does. Huh, I might have really hurt her this time around. I guess I always had poor tact. As long as I have your name on my stomach, I won't forget the reason we've done this. And if I forget nonetheless, you'll be the one reminding me. Alright? If only I could. She takes my face in her hands. She traces every turn and corners of it before kissing me dearly. You're so gentle. You're the most gentle man I have ever known. And I've noticed his kindness since the first moment I laid my eyes upon you. Really? What is she saying? She must be blind or else I'm the only man she ever looked at. No. I'm a vile and disgusting man. Anyone will sooner or later hate me. Even her. I should be the one saying this to her. That she's gentle. That she's perfect. Yet, I say none of those things. I know the moment I open my mouth, I'll destroy this moment that seems so... perfect? Right? Something more cozy? Chapter 10. After the ride, she told me she wanted to change hotel rooms. I didn't understand why. Our current one was already more than enough for the little we actually used it for. But again, she pestered me, saying things like, I want something more cozy and it's with the money I've won, so it shouldn't be a problem, right? 
I didn't really care either way. The only thing that was a bit of a letdown was the fact that we've already paid for our old hotel room for another two nights, so it was kind of a waste. And since we didn't have an infinite amount of money, we would sooner or later be confronted with the fact that we are not beyond the law of society. What if you just keep on playing? While driving around for a while, she finally said, Damn, let's go there. I parked in front of the thing reluctantly and stated the obvious. What the fuck do you mean there? It's a fucking motel. Our old place is way better than this shithole. But I would feel much more comfortable in this one. Are you for real? The type of cheap ass motel you often see on TV where you park right in front of your room. A nest of prostitutes, that's what this place is. There probably isn't even one security camera installed here, else there would be a lot less clients using the damn place. It's not the type of place you would normally call cozy. But then again, I'm supposed to be with a prostitute right now, aren't I? I'll go take care of the room, wait right here. She says so while getting out of the car. No, I'll come with you. No, that's alright. I want to do this on my own. Do this on her own? What is she babbling about? Is she trying to be more independent or something? Does she realize that she's already 21? Isn't she older than this? I hope so. I decided to close my mouth and wait. Nothing good would come from arguing with her. She, re she, bleh, she returned after 5 minutes and we entered our new room. It was pretty plain, like I imagined it would be. Well, at least there's a picture, right? I put down the little we brought with us on the floor and she instantly says, Let's go to a bar or something, it's on me. But we've literally just arrived. But I want a drink, and I know you want two. Let's have some fun like yesterday. Sure. Let's have fun every day from now on. I wanted to say those words. I wonder why I forced myself not to tell her. I wonder why I always forced myself to do things a certain way. Almost like she's manipulating me, right? That was a short chapter. Best day of her life. Hmm. We drank. And later that night we danced. We went to a club this time around. I was not a good dancer at all. Very awkward indeed. But she didn't care. She smiled nonetheless. She would always smile no matter what. And it was a beautiful night. A beautiful night. Something I would rarely even notice before then. This week was the best days of my entire life. She pointed out while moving close to me. We were on the dance floor but didn't move with the crowd. We were standing there looking at each other, moving slowly while each eating each other's eyes. Her eyes were things out of this world. Is she moving? Or am I imagining things? This does look like the place where you would say these kind of things. <laughs> I looked around. There were a lot of beautiful colors flashing. The music was moving us without our consent and the ambience gave the impression that we are on top of the world. It was a beautiful night indeed. I'm not talking about this place, she said without blinking, nor am I talking about the city, I'm talking about you, only you. Do you believe me? Yeah, I do. How could I not with those eyes of hers? Good. She kissed me deeply for a long long time. She then muttered out something I had a hard time understanding because of the music. But you shouldn't. What did you say? She touched my lower abdomen. Nothing. She hugged me for the most part of the night. I was happy there was no accident tonight. No shouting, no pushing. I was glad. How stupid I was, not understanding that the night was yet to be over.